Okay, Daniel 8. In the third year of the reign of King Belshazzar, in a vision appeared unto me, even unto me, Daniel, after that which appeared to me unto appeared unto me at the first. And I saw in a vision, and I and it came to pass when I saw that I was at Shushan in the palace, which is in the province of Elam. And I saw in a vision, and I was by the river of Uli. Then I lifted up mine eyes and saw, and behold, there stood before the river a ram which had two horns. And the two horns were high, but one was higher than the other, and the higher came up last. Now, the, uh, the word ram in Hebrew is A-Y-I-L. I'm not even going to... Ill? I have no idea. But um, it it's like a tree or a post or uh, something strong. I'm sure it can be a ram, an animal. Um, but yeah, it's a like a it's a what mighty mighty man or so I'm just trying to go off the top of my head because for some reason Bible Hub's server is down at the moment or something. I couldn't get it on my computer. But um, I think it says a, a, a pilaster or whatever. So he could be looking. Well, let's just break this verse down. Verse 3, Daniel 8, 3. Then I lifted up mine eyes and saw, and behold, there stood the river, or before the river, a ram which had two horns. So this uh, is what I believe we we're looking at in Daniel 7, uh, where um, the little horn came up, where three of the first horns were plucked up by the roots. Or, yeah, three, yeah. And uh, so if we look close at this, if we pictured we were, if this was standing there ready to launch, right? And if Daniel was a little guy down here about as tall from the bottom of the engine to the bottom of the rocket, okay? He would have to lift his eyes up real high to see this logo, right? I'm going to show you a better uh, copy or a better image of the logo here. This is the logo. Now, this is a Falcon 9, but they're the same logo for Falcon Heavy or Falcon 9. So let me just read that verse again to you and picture this is about 150 feet in the air. Then I lifted up my eyes and saw, and behold, there stood before the river stood before the river a ram which had two horns and the two horns were high they were up their way up there but one was higher than the other and the higher came up last and that that really does describe this logo very well um but there's another way that i have thought about it too uh when this takes off when this launches which it hasn't yet but when it launches, um, the stage separation sequence or whatever they call it, how it works is it launches up and then it kicks these two side ones off when they're empty and then it throttles up the middle one. So it's got, it, it's saving the middle one and using most of the, the side ones for the beginning of the launch and then it kicks them off or separates, breaks in pieces, um, and then it, it actually, after that, it kind of looks more like this. This is going up again, and uh, so the, the way that we could look at this verse also is two horns, well, it could be the two horns on the side, and one was, whoops, one was higher than the other, and the higher one came up last. Well, that's true too. This this center center stage does come up last. So that's just one verse. All right. I saw the ram pushing westward and northward and southward, and he's talking about this one right now uh, because this is the one that has ten completed or eleven completed missions to the ISS, delivering. Uh, dragon there that's the dragon one um so verse four i saw the ram pushing westward and northward and southward so that no beast might stand before him 
neither was there any that could deliver out of his hand, but he did according to his will and became great. Okay, they, this rocket here has uh, set many records. And this is the first rocket. It goes up and goes, it's all fake, but it goes up into space. And then when, when it delivers the dragon, it comes back down. Just, this, just the booster comes back down and lands. That's where these legs down here, they fold out and it lands, okay? Um, I think myself that this is an impossible thing, but, uh, but for the people that believe it, they believe it. So, um, and just uh, keep in mind Revelation 13, 11, uh, 13, 11 through 14 describes uh, this right here coming up out of earth and then making fire come back down and using that miracle to deceive the inhabitants of the world. So uh, it's not just Daniel's vision that tells about this specific thing. So uh, verse 5, And as I was considering, behold, a he-goat came from the west on the face of the whole earth and touched not the ground. The goat had a notable horn between his eyes. All right, let's see what we got for visual aids here. Um, there we go. All right. This one is what he saw. This is uh, Dragon 2 or Red Dragon or Dragon Version 2. Um, As I was considering, behold, a he-goat came from the west on the face of the whole earth and touched not the ground. Well, here's a picture of it going across the earth, not touching the ground. Okay. This was during a, uh, what do they call it, launch abort. Uh, test that they did at uh, SpaceX or whatever. Um, and it had a notable horn between it, between his eyes. Can anyone pic picture that? I can. I can picture that uh, being a horn between his eyes. And he came to the ram that had two horns. Let me, uh, okay. So I think we're talking about this. But it could be, it could be either one of these that he's talking about. I'm not sure. Um, he came to the ram that had two horns, and actually, wait, I am sure because this one doesn't have. Uh, this one is not launching Dragon Two. This launches Dragon Two. Okay. Um, so he's talking about this, and he came to the ram that had two horns, which I had seen standing before the river, and he ran unto him in the fury of his power. And I saw him come close unto the ram. And I wish I had a better picture of that. Uh, this one will. This here, this is inside of this. It, I mean, that's what this, this rocket's made for. So, um, let's see. And I saw him come close unto the ram. And he was moved with collar against him. And smote the ram and break his two horns. Okay, so uh, this is the second stage, or I don't know if they call it the second stage when there's the three boosters, whatever they call it. This is, uh, sorry, that's the part that's right here, the second stage. Um, And break his two horns, and there was no power in the ram to stand before him. So, after, after he breaks his two horns, it's going to look a lot like this. Um, but it'll have a different mod, uh, module. It'll have, where did I put that? It will have the, the Hego. It will have this module on it. Very similar, but... Not the same. It has an uh, area for crew to sit and pretend that they're going to space. Um, now, this is an important part as far as I'm concerned. Very important. Okay. But he cast him down to the ground and stamped upon him, and there was none that could deliver the ram out of his hand. So he, Daniel's seeing this as this module pulling pulling the, the three boosters up and break the two horns off 
and continued on going. Therefore, the he goat waxed very great. And when he was great, or when he was strong, the great horn was broken. Broken. So then we're looking at this. This is the second stage. So, and he puts that other, uh, it puts that other booster down on the ground. And then this and this is all we're seeing now, or all Daniel's seeing now. Uh, and for it came up four notable ones toward the four winds of heaven. Eight Super Dracos making up four, uh, uh, whatever Daniel saw, that's, I'm pretty sure. Okay, and um, let's see. The great horn was broken, and for it came up four notable ones toward the four winds of heaven. Okay, and out of one of them came forth a little horn. The last one came forth a little horn, which waxed exceeding great toward the south, toward the east, and toward the pleasant land. It waxed great even to the host of heaven. So we're talking about something up at the, flying from the ground, going across the ground without touching the ground, flying up to the host of heaven, okay? I, I don't want anyone to tell me that we're not talking about a rocket ship because if we're flying up, what else could it be? Is it being pulled up by God? No. Is it a rope? No. Is it, uh, is it being catapulted up? No. It, it, he said, I saw him come close unto the ram, and he was moved with collar against him, and smote the ram, and brake his two horns. And there was no power in the ram to stand before him. Then he waxed great, and broke, and then we, get, we end up with this at the very end, uh, casting stars to the ground. That's what I'm reading. Okay, now, and then uh, further in here, Further in, well, let me just keep reading. Uh, and it waxed great even to the host of heaven, and it cast down some of the host and of the stars to the ground and stamped upon them. Yea, he magnified himself even to the prince of the host, and by him the daily sacrifice was taken away, and the place of his sanctuary was cast down. And an host was given him against the daily sacrifice by reason of trans get transgression, and it cast down truth to the ground, and it practiced and prospered. Then I heard one saint speaking, and another saint, and said unto that certain saint which spake, How long shall the vision concerning the daily sacrifice and the transgression of desolation to give both sanctuary and the host to be trodden underfoot? So Daniel just saw uh, these two saints talking to each other, and the one asked the other one, how long is this going to be that the host is trodden underfoot? Okay. And he said unto me, unto 2,300 days, then the sanctuary be cleansed. Shall the sanctuary be cleansed? Okay. Uh, and then it goes on and let's see here. That's about, that's the farther, almost the farthest you need to go. But another confusing thing is that in verse 20 it says the ram which thou sawest having two horns are the kings of um, kings of media and persia and the rough goat the he goat is the king of grecia and the great horn that is between his eyes is the first king and we're not talking about kingdoms on the ground or nations of the earth we are talking about like greek uh, mythology like gods okay um and i don't know if they're if they're like nephilim or i really don't know but i do know that uh the king of grecia greek uh greece is the first king and uh and then it goes and it okay let's see Yeah, I, I guess it, it just describes, I think that that's describing after that uh, more the tribulation after he's revealed, after he reveals himself. And so that little horn, just so you know, this is launching in November, apparently, currently. That's what the plan is right now on the launch manifest. 
So, uh, and it's to be decided. But if we're paying attention, we're going to notice that uh, Daniel watched this thing go up. Maybe not this thing, but to me it was this thing. But he watched something go up all the way to the host of heaven, like up to the stars. And then it cast stars down to the ground. Daniel saw this with his eyes. He beheld it. He saw it. And I saw in a vision, and it came to pass. Okay? He saw it. It's not symbolism or anything like that. No. The context of this Daniel chapter 8 is given right at the beginning. It's a vision. He was shown something. It's almost like if I was to show you something on this little Chromebook here. And you were to watch it, and you were to write down what you were seeing with your own words from the time of, that you lived in, you know? Uh, pretty simple to... Oh, the king of Greek, Greece, okay? Uh, just a reminder that the, the... What is it? The angel from the bottomless pit? Or maybe I'm saying that wrong. But is it uh, Abaddon or uh, Apollyon? And... Just so you know, Elon Musk, this guy, this guy with his little horn and his mouth that speaks great things, um, he uh, just said not long ago that SpaceX, uh, SpaceX is, what is it, or SpaceX is, I don't know what it, what it, what word he used, um, but they're they're there or whatever to. Continue the dream of Apollo. So, uh, I think we I think we understand possibly who the who it's talking about when it says the kings of Media and Persia and Grecia. So, um, I'm not saying I know for sure or something, but I'm pretty sure with this description that Daniel gave of something going up to the stars and casting them down. In 2017, there's only one thing that can do that. And actually, there's only one man that uh, is doing that. Elon Musk. So, uh, in November, if this launch goes up, I don't know, might want to just make sure that you have an umbrella or something. Never know. Have a good one.